what it's like owning a 2014 Shelby GT500 Super Snake. In this video, I'm going to give you an idea what it's like to live day to day in the experience the Shelby GT500 Super Snake gives you on a daily basis. So, hope you enjoy my video, and if you do, make sure to give me a thumbs up, share, and even subscribe if you like the content. So, let's get on with it. So, initially driving this car on the street and daily traffic, I guess you can say, it's not the easiest car to drive in the world. It's not as easy as the GT350R is, because that car has a really light clutch. It's really easy to drive. The only difficulty with that car is you gotta watch out for like dips and potholes, because the splitter is just so low to the ground. Um, this car is a completely different animal. Um, it's got the super twin clutch, so the clutch feel is really heavy to me, and so it gets more um, tenuous over time. But driving on the street, it's more difficult because you're dealing with so much more power, I guess you can say. And so this car specifically has been completely retuned. It's got the cam set up, it's got the built internals, the 3.6 liter Kenny Bell liquid cooled supercharger. Um, so essentially this car is a Shelby 1000 under the Shelby Super Snake name. And that happened because when ordering this car, initially I'd opted for the wide body with a normal Super Snake package. But then this came out, so I decided to switch the order and go for this. But back to the street daily driving this car. Um, daily driving with the gas mileage is okay. You get about 10.1 miles per gallon, but no one really cares about that when you buy this kind of car. One cool feature about that, though, is that you're actually making 1,000 horsepower off 91 octane pump gas, which is pretty crazy to me. And if, and if you live in California like I do, the gas is horrible. So it's pretty surprising how the car can sustain so much power. But where this car really does shine is on the back roads and even canyons. And you may not even think that too. Because this is a straight line muscle car. This car does have the straight solid rear axle as you'd expect. But it's really well put together because it has such add-on mods such as the Watts Leak suspension, the Shelby iBox suspension, coilovers. It's got all the built internals under the car. So it does put the power down pretty well. It doesn't get loose too much. Um, when you get on a straightaway, you can definitely full throttle the car as long as you have the tires lowered to the right PSI, I guess you can say. And that being said, I'm running Mickey T Street SS tires in the rears. And I think they hook up great. And if you want them to slip, you can easily do it. Just put in the clutch, rev it up, and dump the clutch. And then you can spin, do donuts, whatever you'd like. So I think the car is really fun and cool because you can do all the capabilities that you want a car to do and it's unlike any co other car on the road and if you live where I live um, in California all you see these days are these Teslas and these BMW i3s and Priuses um, Chevy Volts you don't see much of high horsepower stick shift American muscle cars anymore so that's one thing you just gotta keep an eye out and I think that's a cool feature about this car is because it's so raw and it's so just anti-establishment so, driving the car on these back roads, it kind of reminds me of the Z06, because the analogy of putting the power down on the quarters and how troublesome that can be, and on the straightaways, being able to full throttle and accelerate really fast, and then brake really hard, threshold brake, and it'll actually slow down fast. And because when I tested the Z07 and the Z06 um, about two months ago, the brakes were phenomenal on that car. And I feel like on this car, too, this car does have the Willwood brake option on it. So it completely reworks the brake system on the car. You have air brake ducts as well. And so I think the whole car just flows together really well. I think it looks nice too at the same time. It does have the Shelby non-functional aesthetic mods, like the side scoops. But I think all that's irrelevant in the, in the, in the end of the day. And I think, I think it comes together and flows perfectly fine. I, I like it in my opinion. I think it comes down to personal preference. And another unique and really special thing about this car, I think, is the whole exhaust setup you get with this car. And it's pretty unique out there, and it's not like anything else. A really cool thing, again, is that taking this car and just street racing against anyone else. Like the other day, I went against a Ferrari 458 Italia. And it's not every day when you get to go up against a supercar like that. And the exciting part wasn't, I don't think, beating it. I think the exciting part was just going against a car like that in a Mustang. And then just the reaction we had to them with us driving this car and beating them. 
So I think it's pretty exciting what the car can do, and a car that you can roll up to virtually any other car on the highway and beat it. It's not Bugatti fast, but it's the kind of car that you can just drag race on the street, take the cannons if you want to do it. It's hooked up. You can take this car to the track, too. So I think the car is put together really well, and it does get some Gs. I have clocked 1.16 Gs left to ladder acceleration. So it does hook up on the corners. I took this car to multiple tracks already. So I think the car really comes together as a package, depending on which model you opt for. Now this definitely isn't the new 2016-17 model year with the independent rear suspension, but this car does have enough work down to it, in my opinion, with the Wasseling suspension to really put down the power and actually corner well, making it into a really good track car. And then with the engine too, you can run this car hard all day long. And it's got all the cooling you need, it's got all the power you need, and it's got a really nice whine too when you're driving the car. So I think it really comes together really nice. And I think the engine bay in general just looks really good with all the carbon fiber accessories you can put on it. So I think it's really nice. And it's a car that you don't see much of on the road. You see bunch of other cars um, but this is a really unique car to me um, really special it's really nice it's got a unique sound and if you're interested in that exhaust system I have another video where I compare that against the GT 250R so I compare how loud it is from idle to max RPMs and flybys so if you want to check that video out I highly recommend it. it's a pretty good one but anyways I think the car has a phenomenal exhaust system it's well put together it looks good I think I think it's just overall a nice car to drive, a nice car to experience, and I think a really good factor that comes with this car when you buy it is that you get accepted into a whole community of people, and you get accepted like your family, like you're one of them. And that being said, you can go to the Shelby Bash, you can go to all these different events all across America, and have a nice time, and learn, and meet the people that make these cars and see what went through their minds making the cars and how they do it. So I think it's really nice, really exciting, it's really fun experience ordering the cars and putting it together and going through the whole transformation like how I did. So I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please give me a like, a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. Also comment down below what you think. Um, thanks for watching and if you like this kind of videos, make sure to subscribe and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Thanks again and see you all later.